Hey all, today we are going back to GT3s in Automobile Set 2 because they have also received an update and not just in the physics department, but they are literally new cars, what they call the GT3 Gen 2. We're going to look specifically at the 9N2 GT3R, the latest Porsche and the BMW M4 GT3 that we know so well on this channel. But we're not just looking at the cars, we are looking at your in particular because it's one of the hot debated topics in Automobilista since forever. But yaw is also what really sets all the sims we have today apart. So I think it's worth taking an extra look and how yaw plays out in Automobilista too. So stay tuned. The BMW is a tiny bit over five meters long, which traditionally makes it fairly reluctant to rotate so it's one of the more understeering cars add to that that the engine is also in the front even not as aggressively towards the front as maybe in the road car it still makes for uh considering a race car a fairly understeery package to begin with and for the tests we're doing i think that is good to have a car on one side of that spectrum then we take it to the other side of the spectrum with the porsche 992 gt3 r which is quite a bit shorter than the BMW, which makes it more agile. And additionally, it has the engine traditionally at the back. Even though the 992 is a bit mounted further forward, the car generally has a more mid-engine feel. It's not quite the same as the previous car. However, it still qualifies to be on the opposite end of the spectrum compared to the BMW. So for our tests around your, I think these are pretty decent examples. Uh, let's start with uh, BMW. And we are taking it right to the track. The first thing I always check now, I have kind of my standard routine when playing Automobilista 2, is we turn the traction control on and test how sensitive uh, it responds, because that was something that I kept noticing on previous versions. And it doesn't seem like anything in red that regard has changed so far. You can see me doing some slalomsy with throttle applied and the traction control symbol always coming up immediately on the lowest setting, even though the car is still planted. Even if I turn in and out of that corner here, go aggressive on the throttle, the car is completely planted with the traction control going aggressive. So you can take it from here. We will not use the traction control here because what we are after in this video is the yaw and how to drive fast in that game. So we're not trying to to show somehow, oh, this game is bad or whatever. This is not our target. We are just looking at how to go fast in that game and does it actually behave properly in the zone that is relevant. To assess the yore, it probably first makes sense to understand what it even is. And also it might help for that to actually step out of the cockpit and take a look from behind towards the car to get a better perspective. We could even take it further and actually go into a top view, which makes it a lot easier for us to actually get an understanding. Broadly speaking, and we really do not need a lot of detail here, your angle, and that is what we're eventually looking at, is defined by the difference in the direction of travel of the car towards the direction the car is pointing. And that is what I think you can see pretty good here. Or other ways to describe it would be that the front wheel is probably closer towards the inside of the turn than the rear wheel, indicating that the car is yawing. And this is pretty much where all the sims we currently have differ. Some allow more yaw, yaw some allow less, some are very sensitive to create it, some are very sensitive to lose it. Yaw can be a very brittle state, yaw can be a very easy to maintain state. And these differences are what we're trying to work out here in this video. Before going on to the track and actually watching the laps, we need a bit of theory to kind of gain a better perspective and judge what the car is doing simply by looking at it. 
So we are going back to the famous slip curves that we had in other videos on this channel already. And we're starting out with a peaky slip curve. What does that mean? This means that as the tire starts slipping, as you start turning the wheel, the slip increases. And at some point, there will be the maximum grip available. Peaky in that sense means that there is only a tiny peak at the top of the curve where you will have the maximum grip available. So if you steer a tiny bit too much, you'll suddenly be uh, after the peak of the curve and you already lose grip, steer a tiny bit too little or not carry enough speed, etc. You will be below the peak of that curve and your target usually is to be as close to or around that peak in order to go around the corners the fastest. The problem now is though, we have two axles on the car, which also means the front end and the rear end of the car might be on different, part, on different parts of that curve. So for example, when you go too quick into a corner, you will have the front axle slipping more than the rear, which means the car is understeering. Then as you go through the corner, the speed decreases, the front tires decrease their slip a tiny bit, and then suddenly they find themselves on the peak again. This is probably a moment where the car might be neutral and then the exit arrives and you go onto the throttle, which is where then the rear starts going over the top of the peak and the car becomes oversteery with the front end potentially being below the peak of the curve. In Automobilista then, the situation is a tiny bit different. This is a made up uh, slip curve that we have in Automobilista 2, but essentially is the plateau that we see on top, which is kind of have been have has been confirmed by by Reza in the forum. This means though that even if front and rear axle are on different parts of the slip curve, they still both produce an optimum amount of grip. And that means that if you go through a corner, you will always find the car kind of producing an optimal amount of grip through that corner, giving you huge options to play with going in the turns. You could have an understeery car, you could have a slightly oversteery car, but in all these cases, the car is still going to generate a maximum amount of grip on both axes. This also means that if you kind of overshoot and if your slip varies on both axes throughout a turn, you will never experience a car that very suddenly snaps with the rear or goes into vile understeer. And this leads to what many people would describe as vague in automobilist that way you don't really know what you have to do because you have so many options going through a corner namely you could go neutral you could go understeery you could go oversteery and all the time you will still somewhat have an optimal amount of grip and that's why it's sometimes a bit tricky to choose what you actually need to do in that game so when we are now going to actually look at the lab, I want you to keep this chart in mind and where the front axle and the rear axle are slipwise. Approaching turn one on Watkins Glen, hard on the brakes, you flick it in, and then suddenly, just when I'm going off the brakes and the front bites and the rear goes into that slip, so you'd have, keeping that chart in mind, the rear tire further into the slip curve than the front axle, but still, both are fairly planted, there's never really a risk, even though it sometimes looks like sliding, you still have the maximum amount of grip. And I think this is key to understanding Automobilista 2 and how you have to drive there. Going through the chicane here, the M4 generally, you can see there's a lot of steering angle applied, has a tendency to understeer, but as soon as you put the power down here, you can really feel the car going into this yaw and the front end biting the rear and stepping out, giving the car this nice and steady rotation with both axes still on their very peak of the grip. Even here, on the uphill, very tricky section in ACC, for example, also in I racing. Not that it's easy here, but you just have more room to play with the car, go in a bit, understeer into the turn, then flick it around, 
go over into oversteer for the rest of the corner and at all times really you're using the maximum amount of grip at least on one axle but since we have this plateau on top of the slip curve it's rather easy in Automobilista to always utilize the full potential of both axes and I feel this is what kind of defines the feeling that I have in Automobilista 2. So let's move on to the Porsche that is a little more pronounced. And this whole thing with the slip angles and the plateau in the slip curve really comes in handy for the Porsche because it has this incredible response on turn in and what initially always feels like the rear end is going to pass you it only means that the rear end just takes a moment to go really deep into the slip curve but there it still has optimum grip available so what you will see then here always is the front really dives into the corner whenever you look at the steering wheel overall there is much less steering input than compared to the BMW for example and the rear is kind of almost in auto rotation that's why I added the extra camera in the top right corner there where you can really nicely see especially with the red stripe in the middle of the car where the car is pointing and where it's actually traveling and then most of the time you'll be really able to see that the car has is just turned to the inside a couple degrees in pretty much all driving situations with the rear always a couple centimeters further outward so the car is quite easily permanently yawing in the corner and it never really experiences any understeer at any moment as soon as you turn the wheel the car goes into this steady yaw through the entire corner with both axles firmly sitting somewhere on that plateau certainly with the rear end much further to the right of it but still having a huge amount of grip and i think if you want to experience that and now you can buy the dlc i think the testing phase has just ended then i urge you to just go with the porsche crank up the rake in the car uh, reduce the click of the rear wing even by one or two to get a really nice oversteering car and then you get to experience this yaw or these slip angles or where the rear and where the front it's, uh, sits in terms of the slip curve. I will only say that in Popometa you are able with a subscription on ACC and iRacing to see exactly how much slip the front and rear axle is producing which allows you to judge pretty good whether or not you are over or understeering for example this shall be it for my talking i'll leave you with a couple tv shots from both cars because the exterior sound in the game is fantastic i've not heard any better m4 gt3 in any game so far so i'll wish you a nice rest of your weekend um and i hope you like that video so click that button click subscribe if you feel like it hit the bell because i'm planning to do much more of that and then head over to the member section for track guides or to popometa.io to serve yourself with setups and comparison data or there is also now a merch shop for popometa which hopefully only holds useful items like sports shirts that you can wear sim racing when you're sweating when you're cold on the couch there's a hoodie and there's a shorts and a jogger pants if you feel like it uh, that should be it for me bye Thank <laughs> you.